Uh, you have just heard that uh, this afternoon and uh, our chairman's leadership, WRC 15 approved a uh, very important uh, spectrum for flight, flight uh, checking systems. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, the global family is waiting for a long time. And um, you might also note uh, during my intervention this afternoon that uh, uh, ITU's uh, conference they have its own procedures, and uh, normally it will take uh, somehow four years. That if uh, we have these uh, issues to be discussed by global family, we have to put that on the agenda of the conference and then submit to the, to the conference itself for approval. And uh, the time between we set up on the, on the agenda of the conference to the time you really discuss that, uh, normally it's four years. So we, <laughs> we, we had some difficulties when we heard this tragic uh, incident that uh, Malaysia Airline MH370 disappeared uh, March 8. 2014, and then the Minister of uh, Malaysia uh, asked the ITU to do something to help. And then, you know, that is already, uh, you know, quite late for us to put this on the agenda of our radio conference. However, our members understand the urgency of this issue. They worked very hard to encourage the ITU to include this on the agenda to be discussed uh, at this conference, 2015. And uh, we, we were lucky that the last year we did have our plenary potential conference of ITU, uh, which was held in Busan, Korea, in October, November. And that uh, conference is the highest uh, organ of ITU, so that the members uh, all unanimously agreed that uh, we should invite uh, this uh, WRC 15 to add this uh, item on the agenda and to have uh, original study. Of course, we will not uh, wait until the conference that uh, our experts of uh, industry and administrations come together uh, over the last uh, 12 months and worked intensively to try to find a solution. And ITUR, is my colleague uh, Francois Ronsi, as the director of uh, Radio Communication Bureau, and it's uh, his bureau and his uh, sector who mainly work on the spectrum issue. And the study group four and the study group five of his bureau worked uh, very hard over the last uh, few months and made some suggestions. And of course, uh, you know, whether that uh, suggestion will be accepted or not uh, depends on the decision of this uh, WRC 15. And fortunately, our chairman helped us a lot. And he himself, when he was nominated uh, uh, as the chairman of uh, conference, by uh, in, in, informally, informally, <laughs> at uh, the CPM meeting in March this year, and he wasted no time to work with our member states, with our industries, to encourage them to find a solution at this uh, uh, WRC 15, because the in the industry uh, were beneficial from this decision to make their systems available as soon as you know they can have this spectrum fixed. And the global families, particularly aviation families, you know, the industries would like to have this one also fixed earlier so that they can, you know, make uh, any technical improvement of their system based on this spectrum agreed by our conference. <laughs> so we worked very hard over the last uh, 10 months um, after we got uh, uh, instruction from a plenary potential conference. And we are very pleased that this afternoon we have this uh, uh, request of this additional uh, new spectrum for uh, flight tracking system to be agreed. So uh, I'm not an uh, expert. Uh, we have two experts here. So my colleague uh, Francois Ranzi, who is uh, uh, real expert for spectrum issues uh, over the last two decades, and he could provide you much more detailed information. And of course, uh, our chairman of the conference, uh, Mr. Dodu, uh, can provide you uh, some other information on how we work together to have this uh, uh, you know, agreement reached this afternoon. So without uh, losing too much of your time, let me invite uh, my friend, uh, our chairman of the conference to give you some information. Thanks, please.
Yes, um, today is a remarkable day uh, at ITU at this present uh, WRC 15. Uh, the decision on the, on the global fl uh, flight tracking is a remarkable one because uh, this alone uh, will send a strong signal to the entire global community that ITU is, uh, is an organization that is responsive to the yearning of the global community. Uh, the disappearance of the Malaysian airline uh, could have been any one of us there on board. And uh, the importance that uh, uh, the ITU and the entire conference attached to this issue cannot be overemphasized. And uh, I believe that today's decision uh, at the WRC will go a long way on projecting ITU as a, an organization that is ready at any time to respond to any emergency issue. Uh, we consider this particular global flight tracking as an emergency issue. And so, uh, without any waste of time, uh, we've been able to uh, discuss, deliberate, and uh, agree on a way forward. Uh, I know uh, the discussions were not easy, but uh, we had to go into what we call uh, a kind of consultation uh, to arrive at uh, an agreeable decision, which everyone is aware of. Uh, the decision that uh, the WRC just took this afternoon. And uh, I will hand you over to the director of BR, who will go into the technicality of the entire process. And uh, I believe that uh, with this particular decision, now our aviation industry will witness uh, a kind of uh, improved safety measures with respect to uh, flight tracking on real time uh, all over the globe. Uh, uh, before, uh, aircraft uh, flying uh, through the Arctic region uh, could not be tracked. Uh, the pilots were on their own. But with this decision now, it will be possible to track every aircraft uh, anywhere uh, via satellite uh, uh, within the globe. And so I will request the director to further elaborate on the technicality of this particular decision that the WRC-15 have taken under my leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, in, in practice, what uh, the decision taken by WRC-15 today will allow is the use of ADSB signals, which are currently um, if most aircraft currently uh, commercial uh, passenger aircraft in the world are today equipped with this system, but the system can could until now only be received by terrestrial stations. So the aircraft had to be invisibility of a station on the earth which meant as you mentioned that in over the oceans over desert areas over white forests over uh, polar uh, regions there was no no station which could receive these signals and therefore um, uh, you could not ensure uh, flight tracking um, so what the decision today enables to do is to have satellites receiving these 
uh, signals and transmitting them to terrestrial stations and, and therefore to provide a truly global coverage which was missing at the time of the Malaysian uh, airline tragedy. Um, so this is uh, a very important step. Um, what this changes is that it allows satellites to be built and to be operated uh, using the corresponding frequencies and um, this is what uh, we have decided today after one year of studies, one year of discussions. Maybe I would like to uh, dwell a little bit on why um, do we normally take four years to take a decision. Um, the decision of this conference are modifying an international treaty, which is the radio regulations. This treaty contains all the international provisions for the use of spectrum for all services using spectrum. Whether you speak of satellites, of radio relays, of Wi-Fi, of mobile, of radio and TV broadcasting, um, GPS, whatever, all the system that we are using more and more and we have been using more and more in the last 20 years around the world, all these systems depend on spectrum and the radio regulation is actually how you can use spectrum. The radio regulations enable investments to be made in these systems. I would like to emphasize that the investments uh, which are made in radio communication system every year are in excess of $2,000 billion. $2, billion. When you speak of this type of investment, you need to ensure a long-term certainty that the investments made are going to be respected and protected universally by every country. If you don't have that certainty, the investment will simply not be made. So that's the essence of the radio regulation and the essence of the process that we are following, which is that every decision has to be weighted so carefully that at the end of the conference, all the 193 countries of the ITU will sign the modification to this international treaty and respect it for the next 20 or 30 years. What has happened this time is that given the urgency and the importance of taking a decision to achieve this, uh, the global community, including the civil aviation, the ICAO, and all ITU member states, and all the uh, stakeholders in this part of the spectrum have worked very hard in order to ensure a regulatory and technical solution which can be accepted by all member states. This, this is what has happened today and we are uh, very happy and very proud um, that we could do that. Um, it will certainly pave the way for um, a more uh, a safer uh, use of airspace in, in the future. So with, with this, um, we would like to welcome uh, questions from you and also I understand from people outside of, of this room. Sanjay? Yes, good afternoon. Let me add uh, additional information. This decision this afternoon is absolutely important, but it's not uh, the only one who will make sure that uh, we will have uh, no such kind of uh, incident in the future. Repeated. What I'm saying is, ITU help uh, ICAO uh, aviation system to provide them this uh, spectrum to use to, for, to, 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 to chase those uh, flights in the sky.
but it's not IQ who will be able to detect which flight in which position is away. This kind of things is done by ECAO. Just like you know, anything happened in uh, this incident, to analyze the data in the black box, it's not done by IQ, it's done by ECAO. So that uh, ECAO will be able, and their members will be able to use the new spectrum to chase the flights in the sky. But how can we use this data? How can we identify those problems that is not uh, in the competence of ITU? So I have to make this clear. So that is uh, IQ, IQ, huh? And But anyhow, if uh, you know they don't have this spectrum, they cannot uh, really uh, you know, collect the data and, uh, to, 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 to make sure that uh, you know, the security will be assured by their systems to st strengthen this. So this is uh, uh, something I just remind you to so keep that in mind uh, that when you raise your questions. And some of the questions uh, you know, we, you know, could be linked with uh, the competence of uh, ECAO that uh, we, we should uh, try to also find uh, their representatives uh, here or somewhere and to ask them to help us to, 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 to get some clarification or the answers from their side.